Now, is a uh, eternal security a license to sin? Do you have a license right now to sin? Because uh, you know you have been saved by grace and uh, you can lose it. You see, the most frequent objection to the doctrine of eternal security is that it supposedly allows people to live in any way that they want and still be saved. While this may be <clears throat> technically true, <clears throat> excuse me, it is not true in reality. Now, a person who has truly been redeemed by Jesus Christ would not live a life characterized by continuous, willful sinning. We must draw a distinction between, between how a Christian should live and what a person must do in order to receive salvation. Now, the Bible is clear that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ. Christ alone, nothing else. And this one is a, a well explained in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So you see, is believing alone, faith alone, and Christ gave his only, God gave his only begotten son, that is grace. You see, it's grace through faith alone. And also we see in Ephesians, Ephesians 2, uh, verses 8, it, 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 it also tells us about the same thing. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift. Salvation is free. It is a free gift. Not of works, lest any man should boast. That, that's, that's really clear. Really, really so clear. And also we can see uh, John 14, 6. Uh, John 14, verse 6, it also speaks the same thing. Jesus has said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So you go to Christ by faith. So that one we cannot dispute anything concerning that. Okay? We can't dispute about concerning that. That salvation is by grace through faith only. And it is not anything concerning you or uh, concerning something you've done or blah, 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 all those kind of things. No. But now, we have to ask ourselves one thing. The moment a person truly believes in Jesus Christ, he or she is saved and secure in that salvation. That's, that's true. It is unbiblical to say that salvation is received by faith, but then it has to be maintained by works. No, there is no works there. Now, the Apostle Paul addresses this issue very clearly in Galatians 3.3, 3, that there is nothing which you can do to maintain your salvation. No, 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 no. There is nothing you can do to maintain. And, and I want to, to create a base, a foundation first, before we look on uh, the license to sin. I want to create a foundation first. See what uh, Paul says. Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, now you are made perfect by the flesh. You see what Paul is saying? You can be made perfect by the flesh. No. Now, if we are saved by faith, our salvation is also maintained and secured by faith. Okay? It is maintained by faith. We have something called eternal security. We, have been, we are already secure. It is closed. There is a padlock. You can lose salvation 100%. And you are maintaining that salvation by faith because you once believed and that, that's it. It doesn't mean that uh, you have to do something. There is nothing you can do. It was all by faith and it is maintained by faith, not works. So we cannot earn our own salvation. That's number one. Therefore, neither can we earn the maintenance of our salvation. It is God who maintains our salvation. God tells us very well that he is the one who maintains our salvation. Let me show you. In the book of Jude, Jude, uh, 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 Jude 24, see, it says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. He is the one who is able to keep you from falling. So who is maintaining your salvation? 
God himself is maintaining it. So it is God's hand that holds us firmly. He holds us firmly like this. You're a child of God and he's holding you. And Jesus is holding with one hand and on top of that hand is the hand of God. Who is going to separate you there? Who is going to pick you up from there? See what the Bible says here in John 10:28. See. John 10:28. See how firm you are being held. And I give unto them eternal life, this is Jesus saying, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. This is the hand of Jesus. Listen to also the hand of the Father is also on top. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. See? You see this? You see this? Jesus is holding you and the hand of the Father is also on top. Now who is going to pluck you from there? No one. Nothing can separate you. Let me also show you this verse. Romans. Romans 8, uh, 38. See, there is purely nothing which will separate you. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Do you see you have eternal security? Do you see you can't lose your salvation? It is secure, sealed, and sanctified. You're ready for the rapture and nothing is going to pick you up from there. Do you see this? Do you see the padlock? Do you see it? Okay. Having said that, any denial of eternal security, in its essence, I believe that we must maintain our own uh, salvation by our own works and efforts, this is completely antithetical to salvation by grace. We are saved because of Christ's merit, not our own. There's no, you know, it's, it's not our own salvation merits that we are saved. No, it is basically, we Jesus here, we have taken Christ's righteousness into us, credited to us and we have put all our sins and our guilt and everything on Christ. It is like we have exchanged positions with Christ. See what the Bible says in Romans 4 3. Romans 4 verses 3. You see the beauty of understanding salvation? For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Are you seeing that? He believed and it was counted for him for righteousness. So it is also us believing that it will be counted to us for righteousness. Now, to claim that we must obey God's word or live a godly life to maintain our salvation is a, basically saying that Jesus' death was not sufficient to pay the penalty for our sins. Now, Jesus' death was absolutely sufficient to pay all, every, every sin, past, present, and future, and pre-salvation and post-salvation, everything, it was already paid. He paid for our sins in full. Let me show you this. Romans, Romans 5.8, Romans 5.8, and I'm coming to the point here. But God commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So he paid everything. And I don't want to get much into many Bible verses. I don't want to, the video to be long. So you can go and read 1 Corinthians 15 uh, verses 3, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. Now, this one means that a Christian can live... Uh, sorry, sorry. This is what I want to... Now we are, we are coming to the license to sin. First of all, showing you that you can't lose your salvation. It is guaranteed. Now, since we know we can't lose our salvation, is this now a license for us to sin? Is it a license now? Does this mean that a Christian can live in any way he wants and still be saved? This is essentially a hypothetical question because the, the, the Bible 
makes it clear that a true Christian will not live in any way that he wants. Christians are new creations. We are new creations. See 2 Corinthians 5.17. See what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So now we understand that you become a new creature. So Christian should demonstrate, should demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit. Are you demonstrating the fruit of the Spirit? Do you have these fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Do you have these fruits? Are you demonstrating that? Or are you demonstrating the, act, uh, the, 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 the acts of the flesh? Just go and read Galatians. 5 uh, from 19 to 23. Just go and read and understand. Are you demonstrating that? Now, when you look at John 3, 6 to 9. Look at John 3, 6 to 9. John 3 uh, from verse 6 to 9. It clearly states that a true Christian will not live in continual sin. See, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Okay? Marvel, marvel not that I say unto ye, you must be born again. Okay? The wind bloweth where it list, uh, listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it cometh, and whither it goes. So everyone that is born of the Spirit, so everyone that is born of the Spirit, uh, is of the Spirit. So anyone who is born again, let, let me read here. So, oh, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell where it cometh and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. That's, that's, a, that's a, the tongue I should have used. So anyone who is born, he will start walking and feeling just the same way you see the wind blowing. But you can't see the wind, but you can see the fruits of the wind. You can see peppers, you know, running towards the south. And you can tell the wind is coming from the north to the south. That's exactly how people who are saved are like. And you're there out thinking. Mm, mm. You ask yourself one question here. In response to the accusation that, uh, you know, grace promotes sin. The, the Apostle Paul himself, he declared, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that uh, grace may increase? I'm sure that, that that's what most people ask themselves. Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? Paul said no. No, it's not possible. Romans 6.1, see what Paul says. Yes, we have liberty. We have all this. We can sin the way we want. But is we are not supposed to do that. See, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we? That are dead to sin live any longer therein. So, you have already been saved by grace. So, there is no essence of you starting to wake up and doing wrong things. And doing, you know, all those, uh, everything else. You see, eternal security is not a license to sin. Rather, it is the security of knowing that God's love is guaranteed for those who trust in, in Him. Knowing and understanding God's tremendous gift of salvation accomplishes the opposite of giving a license to sin. How could anyone, knowing the price that Jesus Christ paid for us, go on to live a life of sin? You're already dead. To sin and you are alive in Christ Romans uh, 6 uh, uh, from 11 and and all that the, the Bible tells us even so consider yourselves to be dead to sin but alive to Christ and also you can go and read the uh, Romans uh, 6 15 to 23 so now how could anyone who understands God unconditional and guaranteed love for those who believe, take the love, that love, and throw it back in God's face. Such a person is demonstrating 
not that eternal security has given him a license to sin, but rather that he or she has not truly experienced salvation through Jesus Christ. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. You, you, you don't keep on sinning. You run away from sin. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. If you say that you keep on sinning because grace may abound, then you don't even know him. See what the Bible says in 1 first, uh, first John. 1 first John 3, 6. If you say, I will keep on sinning, then uh, you don't even know him. Whoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither does he know him. If you keep on sinning and you're, you're enjoying the sin and you're not running away from sin, you're coming, you're running towards sin, then you don't even know him. So grace is not a license to sin. Knowing that you, 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 are, you are secure does not mean that you should continue sinning. That's not what God wanted it to be. He was basically showing you that you have a surety. Despite anything which can happen, you see we are human beings and we are prone to mistakes and time, and time again we are, we are falling left, right and center. But, but he was assuring us that nothing will be able to separate us from the love of Christ. It's not that it's a license to go and sin and do all those wrong things. If you continue sinning then uh, deliberately then probably you didn't even know why you were saved in the first place. And that's exactly how carnal uh, uh, people behave. And others who have not even been saved. Because there's a difference between a carnal Christian and an unsaved Christian. A carnal Christian, he's doing deliberately and he knows and God is punishing him and he continues. He's like uh, the disobedient child in a family. It's always doing wrong things and they know that the father doesn't like it. But they keep on doing. You punish them, they keep on doing. Finally, they become thieves and they are shot by the police and they die. Yes, the father will, uh, uh, will go and bury them. But was that the will of the father? No. No. So if you're not saved out there and you're still asking yourself, am I saved? There's a simple way of how you can be saved. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it tells us about how Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. When you understand how he died and why he died, then that gives you salvation. Jesus replaced himself. You are supposed to be at this cross. So he replaced himself. He blotted out your sin. While you were still sinners, Christ died for us. And that's why we need to understand and accept that payment. And once we understand that Jesus died, he was buried and rose again, according to the scriptures, for us, then all we need to do is confess what we have believed. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that, uh, you know, uh, he was raised from the dead, then you shall be saved. So what do you confess? You confess what you know. You can go to a court of law and confess what you don't know. Confess what you know. You have already understood and believed from your heart and tell Jesus, Jesus, I know you died for my sins. You were buried and rose again. Thank you for doing this for me. I believe in you and now I am saved. I receive the gift of salvation. And once you do that, Lord, uh, 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 friends, you're, you're good. And you're saved and sealed and sanctified. Hope this has been a blessing to you. If you like this video, please give it a, a thumbs up. You can also share the video, let other people be able to understand. And also you can subscribe to watch more videos and uh, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any new videos. Because we post new videos every day. Every day we are always posting videos to edify the body of Christ. God bless you and have a blessed time.